What's going on guys, Sherry Dunn here, your personal mentor. So, another day, another Sunday, and we are talking about who is hiring. So let's jump straight into who is hiring. The first company I wanna to talk to you guys about is this company called Steady, S-T-E-D-I, not S-T-D, that's different, we don't want that. What we do want is S-T-E-D-I, Steady. So, what is Steady? So, you know, everything you buy, let's just say you go online and you shop for new Nike shoes, or you go shop for a new MacBook, or you order something from Amazon, or even like, you know, something related to, let's say you buy uh, or order some food on Uber Eats. Anything you buy online has data that's created around it. So there's things related to purchase information, customer information, product information, SKU, shipping weight, a million data points that are created with every purchase that, you know, you make as a customer, as a vendor, as a supplier, manufacturer, whatever. So there's literally trillions of data points uh, in our life that are created. Now, EDI, which is I think stands for, I'm gonna search it up, Electronic Data Information, EDI, Wikipedia. <clears throat> electronic Data Interchange. So EDI basically what it does is it's the backbone of all of this data going through these um, pipes. So anytime you as a consumer gives your data to, let's just say a supplier or a, or, or a, a business, that data gets transferred through this pipe called EDI, right? Now, I don't know shit about EDI personally, right? But these are one of those industries that are, you know, that are legacy industries. They've been around for so long and nobody really thinks about them because they haven't been, you know, innovated for a long, long time. Same thing with like the backbones of email. Like what does email actually run on, right? Is it the internet or what is like, you know, like um, a podcast? Like podcasts run on this thing called, I think RSS feed. Like what does that pipe look like? It's not just the internet. So some of these industries have not been innovated or updated for a long, long time, but guess what? There are some companies who are taking advantage of that, you know, legacy infrastructure and making it better. So the first company I wanna to talk to you guys about is EDI. So do the best work of your life at EDI. So before we go, let's just check out what EDI does. So I'm just gonna to go to the website. And this company, by the way, is super under the radar. So you won't find much information about them, but they are kind of cool. So structured messaging platform for the B2B trade. B2B means business to business. Um, Bunch of really cool investors. Look at it, first round, one of the best investors invested in Uber. Uh, Stripe, obviously, as we all know, one of the leaders in the payments world. Some other you know, companies that are cool as well. So these guys are building uh, an exchanging exchange platform for B2B transaction, any transaction between two businesses, right? Um, and and the idea here is, they're, you know, I'm assuming are improving that network, making it faster, making it easier, making it easier for you know, customers who use EDI to, you know, share information a lot faster. So there's a bunch of stuff like you can see in this transaction types that are used over the old EDI platform, like everything from pricing support to vehicle credentials to, I don't know, there's a million things. So anyways, they're doing work, exciting work in a boring sector. And that could be a lot of, you know, there could be a lot of awesome opportunity when you join companies like that. Think back to time when like, for example, Stripe, basically said, hey, we're gonna go help every new company get you know, mobile payment on their platform. Cool, like it's been done before, but what's, what's exciting about them? But the way they did it, the way they made it easier, made it better for everybody else. So if you look at it here and you go to their career side, so let's go to careers up here and let's check out what they're hiring for. So first thing is, you know, they talk about trillions of dollars to annually go through the global network of commerce. We have this old archaic framework called EDI Hasn't been any much change in it, but these guys are trying to make it better. So what is EDI, what is Steady working on is to, you know, they, they have a massive goal. Steady's only goal is to process every B2B transaction on the planet. Now that's a big vision, right? So you can't just, you know, they're not trying to just have a small win. This could be a massive rocket ship if it works, obviously, right? Now, obviously that also comes with a lot of challenges, right? Not a lot of these big ideas ultimately pan out and, and it makes sales harder. You know, when these guys go and get customers, it's gonna to be tough because they're gonna be like, hey man, like we've been using this old school platform for literally 50 years. Why should we try something new and maybe screw up our existing ecosystem? So it's a bit, you know, it's a big uh, uphill battle, especially for sales. But if these guys have the right folks behind them, especially the team who's building awesome stuff and is passionate about it, and they can actually prove that they built something cool, then this could be something big. So they have some tenants and stuff you can read up on. Uh, now, this part is cool. So. I obviously haven't worked for them, but I know about them. And these guys seem like one of the best employers to work for because they give equity, not just any equity, they actually give meaningful equity, equity to their people. They have all these other perks and they don't have perks like, oh my God, we have a slide at work or 
you know, free food, come work for us, and you can take a nap at 2 p.m. Like, I think this company seems a lot more like they want to do business, they want to build a great product, and they have a leader, I think, who is super passionate about what he does, uh, what this company does. Now, the roles that they're hiring for, there's a couple of roles I just want to mention, front-end engineer, services engineer. Now, if you guys are in the world of engineering and are looking to get into a rocket ship that could potentially be, you know, the next, I don't know, Stripe or the next uh, Amazon or something massive or the next Google, this could be it. And worst case scenario, if let's just say you go here and it fails, no worries, you've learned so much stuff building something super cool, right? Uh, and if it does work, man, then you're not gonna be talking to me or anybody else. You're not gonna be talking to your current friends. You're gonna be like on some yacht or on some island that's named after you. So anyways, my point is this is one of those companies that's gonna be either like multi-billion dollars or it's gonna go to zero. Now, even if you're not an engineer, I wasn't an engineer, I still applied for a role because when something like this comes up, which is super unique, you should always, always apply. So over here it says, we always hire opportunistically, tell us how you can help. So sometimes, let's just say you're in marketing or you're in finance or you're in business development or you're good at sales or you have some unique angle that you can bring to any company. Every company needs something unique. You could even be a, an amazing uh, assistant or a receptionist and be like, hey look, I love what you guys are doing. I'd love to be a part of it, even a small part of it. So read into it and let's see what they're you know, hiring opportunity for. So they're, you know, they posted this on, uh, on um, Lever, Lever. Um, so they're 25 person company, that's pretty good, that's a good size, $21 million in funding, that's pretty awesome, that means they have money, um, software focus obviously, uh, team comes from a lot of cool places, so Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Twitter, Uber, uh, and most work in engineering design and product, so lots of lots of cool things, and there's, you know, they're looking for, this is what they're looking for, pretty open-ended, right? It's like, you know, a lot of people could be that, so if you have passion for something like this, uh, you know, I would definitely apply. Now, you could definitely click this and apply for it, but there is a better way. So let's look for that. So I think the better way is find out who the CEO of this company is. So Zach Cantor is the CEO, right? Now, I've actually emailed Zach. Now, I'm not gonna tell you uh, his actual email address, but I actually emailed him because I was like, you know, I think this company is doing some cool stuff and you should definitely reach out to someone like that who is the founder, and especially for small companies that are under 50 people of employees or even under 100 people, you know, those founders are super passionate about hiring and being super involved in the hiring process of their, you know, early team. I remember, I think, I don't know if that's, I don't know the exact number. I think the first 5,000 employees at Google, or maybe it was first 2,000 employees at Google, were all hired by Larry and Sergey Brin, right? So Larry Page and Sergey Brin. So point is, a lot of these founders of small companies are super passionate about who they let in because every person you let in changes the DNA of that company. So in this situation, Zach is the man that you got to reach out to. Now, he obviously has a super uh, amazing background, as you can see here, right? Now, is it like Stanford graduate, Harvard Business School, or any of that stuff? No, but this person is actually very highly respected in the world of you know Silicon Valley, and he's super thoughtful, and if you listen to some of his podcasts, you will actually understand how he thinks about this problem. So before I emailed him, I listened to all of his podcasts, every show that he was on, so I could understand how this person thinks, and I thought it was super you know, amazing. It was super impressive and I shot him an email. So not only did I apply on that link that I showed you guys earlier, I also shot Zach an email. And you can obviously guess what his email is at Steady. So not only did I email him a super passionate note about where I think I could be helpful to the company, he replied to me in a day, under 24 hours he replied to me and he rejected me. He even said like, look, good background and all that stuff, but you're not a good fit for what we're looking for right now. But he appreciated the fact that I you know, reached out to him. Now. The point of that story is I want you guys to also reach out to folks, right, who you are passionate for working for and people that you think are going to be, you know, in leadership position for these small young startups. You never know. Maybe they like, maybe they don't. But point is you got to take that shot. And guys, one thing I just want to mention is that, look, think about it from this angle, right? This guy, Zach, he doesn't need to reply to me, right? I'm nobody. But he did. He looked at that email. He looked at that passionate cold email that I sent him. He knew that I was interested in this you know, person's company, I read about it, I was excited about what they were building, and he was nice enough to reply. So people like that are obviously super passionate and involved in their, you know, building of the next big thing. And if this person is replying to no one's email, my email, that's a good sign. That's a good sign that Zach's actually a good human, a good homie to reach out to. So anyways, if you're interested in Steady, I think it's a great company. I feel great about it. I'm going to put money in it if I could. I don't have money, but I would. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, team, let's go to the next company. So the next company we have is Canva. What is Canva? 
So whenever I create these YouTube videos and other things in my life, creative projects, logos, presentations, any cool graphic, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, anything, right? And I'm just a basic creator online. I'm not a big creator, but there's literally millions of creators out there. When we need to use a software, we're not using Photoshop to create a basic Instagram image or a Facebook post, right? Or a YouTube cover. What we're using is Canva. So Canva is a cool company out of Australia. Yes, there are companies in Australia. Not all companies start in San Francisco or Toronto or London. Right? And this company I think is super, super awesome. So I found out about this company back in 2013, I would say, maybe 14, around that time. And uh, the founder of the company is this lady, awesome lady named Melanie Perkins. Is it Melanie Perkins? Let's see. Let us see. Melanie Perkins. Did that pop up? Yes, it is Melanie Perkins. So uh, the founder of the company is Melanie Perkins and Melanie Perkins is someone who I never have met, but I cold emailed her back when I was at Google because I thought Canva was awesome. And back then I was using Canva for basic things that I, was, I needed for my presentations. Align, you know, creating a logo, I need to create some simple graphic, uh, you know, touch up a photo, things along those lines. And this was like, whatever, seven, eight years ago. But now Canva is a massive company. It's almost like a multi-billion dollar company. How big is Canva? Billion dollars, I think $6 billion if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Canva built a 3.2 billion. Oh, six, there you go, Canva raises $60 million on a $6 billion valuation. So this is in summer 2020. So this company is doing amazing already. They're crushing it. Now, let me show you guys a little bit of what this product looks like. So just to give you an idea, it's, it's Photoshop online is the best way to put it, but it comes with a lot of cool features and it's simple to use. It's like you don't need to learn how to use it. You just get it, right? So when you look at it, and I'll show you exactly how I use Canva. So I'm just gonna go to my own Canva. So this is what Canva looks like for me. I can design a bunch of things. You can design YouTube intros, thumbnails, posters, whatever. So you've seen my YouTube thumbnail. So for example, here, you know, here's a thumbnail that I, you know, work on all the time. So you'll see all these graphics that I use for my YouTube videos. Like this is where I kind of create them, right? So it's stuff like that. My point is, this is exactly what, uh, you know, Canva does. It's, and it's very easy to do. So if you, let's just say, for example, want to create a simple exhibit. So I'm just gonna, you know, show you guys what that looks like. I'm just gonna click create a design right? Just to say, I want to create an Instagram post. So easy. And then I'm going to just go in and let's say I want to create a simple poster. Oh, here we go. Uh, you know, coronavirus Instagram post, right? Let's just say I wanted to create this, right? I can simply click that, click this and boom, I have a template which looks super nice and ready to go. Right. And obviously I can edit this. I can do other things to it. Point is Canva allows, you know, creators like myself and millions of others who don't have all the, you know, creative skills of like using Photoshop and Illustrator and all these other cool tools allows us to do that. Now, the company is also already massive, right? It's $6 billion worth, but that doesn't mean this company is not going to go places, right? Think about it this way. Think about the time when Facebook went public. So, you know, what was valuation of Facebook? Facebook's valuation when it went public. Let's think about that. Let's think about it. Let's not, let's read it. Um, initial public offering, $26 a share. Um, the IP was the biggest technology IP, one of the biggest in internet history with a peak market cap of $104 billion. Facebook went public at $104 billion, right? Right now, Facebook is worth market cap of $700 billion. So Facebook has gone up 7x, you know, since that time. And if you just think about that, that means a lot of companies have a lot of potential to grow. Companies can start at a certain point and go and become bigger. Just look at Zoom, for example, Zoom valuation when it went public. Now, obviously it's a little bit biased because we're going through Corona times, uh, but Zoom basically, uh, you know, if you just look at the last, let's go one year, Zoom stock was like hovering just beginning of this year, like 70 bucks. Look at it now, it's like 500 bucks, right? That's seven times as well, right? Is it? Uh, yeah, it's seven times, which is crazy. So just think about it that way, right? A lot of companies may be big already and they may be private, but just because they're already bigger than most companies, that doesn't mean you still, you don't have room to grow, but don't join a company just to make money. You will make money no matter what. Join this company because I think it is awesome. Now, a couple of reasons why I think this company is awesome. Number one, this company is awesome because it is a cool product that I've been using for so long. I've been a customer for this for seven, eight years so have thousands of other people. So when a company has such a great product, they're doing something right and they have some good people that are building some awesome stuff. 
Number two, awesome founder. I think Melanie Perkins is great. She's not, she doesn't, she's not driven by ego. She's cool people. She's fun. Uh, watch her stuff on YouTube, listen to some of her podcasts, love the story, uh, you know, uh, super, uh, you know, uh, I guess like she was super under the radar and the company actually started by printing photos for, uh, um, uh, you know, high school grad books and, uh, and high school graduation books and those kind of things. So it's an amazing story of how the company started. Seems like people love working there. If you look at the reviews of the company and, and, and you know, reviews of people that are actually in the company. And on top of that, it's in Australia. What's not to love about Australia? It's a great place to live in. Awesome weather, beautiful people, great beaches of Bondi, uh, great you know meat pies, uh, fun city, and, and it's kind of far, far away where nobody really thinks about that part of the world, right? So I would highly look at Canva. Now, there's a job that they're hiring for that I think you guys should look at. So this is an associate product manager in Ingredient Studio. So I don't know what Ingredient Studio specifically is, but I kind of have an idea by reading some of this description. Ingredient Studio, from what I think, is when you use Canva, there's a lot of you know um, exhibits and images and uh, artifacts or illustrations and logos that have been pre-built by Canva for you, right? As as a as a customer, and I use them a lot. So if, let's just say I need. So let's let's actually go back to Canva and show you what I mean by that. So let's just say we go create a design. Um, let's just say Instagram post. <clears throat> Now let's go into da, 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 da. let's go into elements, right? So if you go in here, I feel like there's a, like this stuff is I think what Canva is automatically creating, and they're not obviously they may have an internal team that's building this, but I think they're also you know getting a lot of third-party creators who want to add more of their uh, style on Canva to do this. So for example, if you want to you know put in this thing in your thing, you want to make a cool exhibit with that, right? You want to add whatever this is, whatever this thing is. Someone is creating this, and some cool artist out there who loves doing this, is, is passionate about this, is putting this on. I think this functionality is what Ingredient Studio is, and I could be wrong, but point is, they're looking for someone to be an a APM, Associate Product Manager, and by the way, that role is one of the best roles ever because this role is actually super sought, up, uh, sought after at Google and Facebook as well. It's an entry-level role if you wanna become an, a product manager in the company. So Associate Product Managers come in, they work you know, closely with the product team, uh, engineering team, design team, marketing team, finance team, business team. It's a great place to be if you want to work with multiple people and see a product go from, you know, before even inception, all the way to its building phase, to launch phase, to sustainability phase, to, you know, running it over the next few years phase. It's a great, great role. And if I could rewind time and if I didn't want to be an investment banker, I would actually be an associate product manager or something. That would be my you know, hope. So anyways, check out this role. I think this role is really cool. It was recently posted. You can apply for it, but obviously, most likely this role is in Sydney. Yep, it's in Sydney, so you'll have to go move to Australia, which is great. It's a great place to be. So check out this role. I think this is a good company, a really good company. It's a valued at $6 billion. I think in the future it could be valued at $20, $25 billion. And most likely, I think this is one of those companies that someone like Microsoft, Google, I don't know who else, some of these big, big players would buy. And think about the dynamics, right? Adobe has a massive creative studio uh, from Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, all that stuff. Microsoft doesn't really have it other than Microsoft Paint. This could be a pretty good, interesting buy for Microsoft. Could be a great buy for Google, right? Could be a great, Google has, you know, Docs, Google has email, Google has all those things, but nothing really on the creative studio side. This could definitely be something Google could, could purchase. Um, Facebook doesn't have a creative site. Facebook has a lot of creators on their platform from Instagram on their, um, you know, what else does Facebook have on the creator side? I guess Facebook, right? Social media and all that stuff. So think about like where this company could ultimately also be. So yes, it can go public, which makes a lot of sense, but I actually think this is a great company for, uh, you know, one of these larger companies to actually buy. Maybe even Apple, you never know. So anyways, look into Canva, apply for this role. I think it's awesome. Check out Melanie Perkins. You know, she's a superstar. Um, and, and just crushes it in, in life. And I, I am a big believer of this company. So this is one that I think you guys should definitely look at. All right, let's go on to the last one. The last one is a fun one, right? So what is the last one? All right, so sometimes you gotta be aware of the industry you're getting into and also start tracking talent, how they're moving between one company and another company. So I came across this opportunity because a little birdie told me that this company is hiring and I wanted to bring it to you guys. So in the world of venture capital, there's a lot of like, you know, it's a very uh, transient industry. People join one company or one venture firm, then they move on to the next venture firm. 
and they keep on going and sometimes they become a partner in one firm because they couldn't be a partner in another firm, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, people move around a little bit. Usually, you know, people would have worked at two or three venture capital firms by the end of their career. I actually think there's a rising star in the VC world. I've met her once. I think she's awesome. She, you know, we, I reached out to her because we were trying to raise money for my last startup. We, she never uh, ended up investing in us, which is fine, but I thought she was awesome. Her name is Anna Khan, and Anna used to be at Bessemer, I think. Anna Khan was at Bessemer. Let's see. Bessemer. Yes, she was at Bessemer Venture Partners, and she was a vice president there when I got connected with her. So, Anna's an awesome person. She left Bessemer and joined Charles River Ventures. So Charles River Venture is one of the, and I'm on their website right now, it's one of the oldest VC firms in Silicon Valley, it has done great, is awesome, blah, 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 all that good stuff, right? Has invested in some of the biggest companies like uh, Twitter, I think. Um, what else have they invested in? Uh, let's see, let's look at their portfolio. Oh, here we go. You can probably see their top portfolio here. Drift, I don't know what they do. Uh, company, I don't know. Airtable, we know, awesome company. It's kind of like building a future version of tables and Excel combination. Zendesk uh, is customer support software. Twitter, we already know. Um, Yammer used to be a cool company. I don't know if people still use it, but let's look at actually, let's go back to entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. All right, so what else have they invested in? Uh, let's look at consumer companies because we would probably know consumer. Bird, scooter company. I don't know if that's a good company, uh, but anyway, I, I could be um, biased. DoorDash, everybody needs food. Dropbox, obviously we know about that. Um, ClassPass uh, is, you know, you don't need a gym membership and uh, Payal Kapadia is uh, is one of the nicest people you'll ever hear about, I've never met her. Um, and then, you know, some other cool companies. But anyways, point is they've done well and they have a lot of history. So point is, Anna actually ended up joining this team. So if you look here and you go down, there she is, Anna Khan, right? So Anna Khan was at Bessemer. Uh, she apparently crushed it there uh, and was good. I had a great conversation with her when I met her over a Zoom call and she asked really thoughtful questions. She was brilliant at what we're doing. She was well prepared for our meeting. Um, and she, you know, knew, you know, she had tested the product in advance. She was, um, what else was, I think was awesome about her. She had empathy. She understood, you know, found her pains and best of all, she's Pakistani like I am, uh, historically. I have since then been more Canadian than Pakistani, but you get the idea. All right. So Anna Khan's awesome. Now Anna Khan moved from, you know, Bessemer and she moved to Charles River Ventures. Now, obviously I don't know what her title is here. I think she's partner. Anna Khan partner, let's see. <clears throat> Anna Khan general partner, so she is a GP. Great, so then, you know, so she was a VP at Bessemer and she ended up getting this opportunity at CRV to be a GP. So now she's a GP, let's look at her, you know, uh, uh, background a little bit, obviously super stellar background, you know, crushed it at Stanford, crushed it at Harvard, uh, and then, you know, has been working and, you know, various capacities, um, let's keep on going back down, see where she started. So, oh, there you go, Morgan Stanley. So she's Morgan Stanley Blue Blood. Then she went and did a bunch of roles, became an analyst at Bessemer Venture Partners, which is not an easy role to get. A lot of VC firms don't have, you know, these junior roles, then, you know, started getting on deals. So this is like board observer basically means she was not the actual board member, but, you know, uh, attended board meetings. Then, you know, invested in some really cool companies, got promoted to vice president. Uh, and then, you know, whatever reason, found opportunity to join as a general partner at CRV. Maybe CRV was looking to add more, you know, fresh, uh, fresh minds and young talent, you know, rising talent to their, to their team. And she joined CRV. So anyway, so she's at CRV now and she's a general partner, which is awesome because she has, uh, you know, check writing power and decision making power. Now, the fun part here is when someone like this actually moves to a, a new team or new company, a lot of the times, or new VC firm, a lot of times these GPs will then start looking for some junior talent to come underneath them, a principal or an associate to come work for them. So what I'm hearing through a little buddy is that Anna Khan is actually looking for a, a principal for her um, enterprise software team. So uh, a principal is someone who is not an associate but slightly above. So this is a job that is not posted, but if you are interested and you have experience in enterprise software, maybe you are currently working at enterprise software, uh, at let's just say uh, Snowflake or Oracle or uh, I don't know, what are the other enterprise software companies? Zendesk, uh, that's not enterprise software. Uh, Salesforce, I guess, could be a little bit. Uh, SAP, you know, some of these companies that you, you're like, what do they do? Like, you know, uh, Checkpoint software, I don't even know if that exists. Um, so anyways, if you are in enterprise software right now and, or Datadog could be enterprise software, 
If you're in that space and you want to get into the VC world and you have a lot of experience in enterprise software, this would be a great person to work for. Forget about the firm CRV, but Anakam would be a great person to work for, work with, learn from, grow with, all that good shit. So anyways, if you are interested, shoot Anna an email, shoot her, shoot her a cold email, tell her like how cool you are uh, and tell her how all the awesome stuff you've done and all the stuff, awesome stuff you want to learn about. All right, team. So those are the three jobs for today. We talked about Steady, which is the new, you know, boring, uh, you know, uh, updating a boring industry, which is a great way to uh, great industries or great companies to join, just like how Uber innovated the taxi market. Uh, and, you know, this is, you know, innovating something totally different, a much larger scale. Great founder. Check them out. If not that, then check out Canva. I think Canva is awesome. Canva is a company, like I said, is in the creative space. Creative space is blowing. It's already a $6 billion company. I think it could be a $25, $30 billion company. Great founder, great people. Australia is awesome. Uh, fun life uh, and you know, chill on the beach all the time. Uh, so check out Canva, great product and CRV, but not just CRV. For me, I think Anna Khan is awesome. Uh, I think she'd be a good person for you to work with. I'm not good at enterprise software. That's not my forte. So I'm not applying for that job, but if you are interested, you should look into it. All right, team. So that's the episode for today. That's who's hiring. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will try to make another one next week. If not next week, the week after, if not the week after, the week after and on and on and on. All right, guys, team. I love y'all and I will see you guys when I see y'all. Take care. Bye-bye.